Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Too Tall Toby, and in today's Fusion step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna try to model up this part here. Now, this part comes from the Too Tall Toby website, tootalltoby.com, and you can see here that this part is available as our free challenge for anyone. You don't need an account or anything like that. You just say, try as a guest at tootalltoby.com. You say, click here to try this sample, and you say, reveal drawing. And you can see here that the way these, these challenges work is that you're gonna open your 3D CAD system, Fusion. You're gonna 3D model this part in millimeters. You're gonna assign ABS, and then you're gonna try to calculate the mass and enter the mass down here. And if you get that mass correct, you'll finish the challenge. And if you get it incorrect, you'll get feedback saying, this is incorrect and the clock is still running. So that's the gist of this uh, challenge here at tootalltoby.com. As far as this tutorial goes, I am not a fusion expert, but by the end of this video, what I hope to share with you is the ability to model up this part and the ability to export that geometry and bring it into a 3D printer slicer so that you could actually turn this geometry into a 3D model. So if that all sounds good to you, be sure to hit the like button on this video and let's get into it here. We're gonna start out by going to tootalltoby.com. We're gonna to click on this try as a guest link. We're gonna say, uh, click here for the sample and go. What is the mass of this part? So whenever I'm trying to come up with a game plan for how to model parts, the first thing that I do is I ask myself, where would the origin be located on this part? And I think that in the case of this part here, I'm gonna drop the origin right here in the middle. Now, the reason for that is because first of all, we've got these center line symmetry notes, and that means that everything on this side is the same as everything on this side. We've also got one here, but Really, anytime I've got a part that has a rectangular base like this part here, I'm going to put the origin right here in the middle of the part because that's going to leave me with a plane running right through the middle of the part here. In this case, it would be the right plane. And the reason that's beneficial is because then if I do any work on this side of the model, any kind of complex modeling, I can just mirror that work across to the other side using that plane. And also, if I put this part into an assembly, I can use the center plane from this part and the center plane from the other part and just kind of merge them together coplanar to align those two parts. So whenever I've got a rectangular base, I'm probably going to put the origin right there in the middle, but especially on a part like this where we've got these center line symmetry notes. So now that I know where the origin is going to be, my next question is where is my first sketch going to be and what's it going to look like? And I think that my first sketch is going to be on the top plane and it's just going to be a rectangle here. 30 by 55, and again, that rectangle will be located right here on the origin. So now that I've got that rectangle sketched, I'm going to do an extrusion, turn that rectangle into a solid, and bring it up to a height here of 7 millimeters. And now I've got a 3D model, and I can use that 3D model. Uh, you know, it, it'll look kind of like this. It'll, it'll have sharp corners here. So now I'm going to need to take those sharp corners and kind of round them off. And you can see that I'm, I'm going to create a radius here of 8 millimeters, and we're going to do that using a tool called fill it and then the final note that we're gonna that we're gonna observe here is this one here it says 1.6 wall thickness typical typ that means typical and what that means is basically unless otherwise specified all these walls here are going to be 1.6 wall thickness even the base down here is going to be 1.6 wall thickness and whenever you have that type of a scenario you're going to be using a feature called shell shell is a tool that you can use to remove one face so we'll remove this face here and then take all the other faces and make them 1.6 millimeters. So that's the game plan for this model. I know I took two minutes and 25 seconds to come up with that game plan, but I think it's always good to come up with a game plan before you get started modeling, especially if you're at the beginning of your 3D CAD career. So now that I've got that game plan in place, let's take this challenge, let's move it over to our second screen here and let's bring up Fusion. So here you can see I'm looking at Fusion and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to create a new document. So I'll choose new here. And now you can see that I'm looking at Fusion. I've got the tree over here on the left. I've got my origin, I've got my XY plane, I've got my YZ plane and I've got my, uh, sorry, X, Y, X, Z, and my Y, Z plane. So I'm going to click on my X, Y plane. Now, usually what I do here is I right click on that plane. That's like my top plane. And then I choose create a new sketch. 
So now I'm in sketch mode looking down on this thing from the top and you can see that I've got these different tabs up top here, sketch, utilities, manage, plastic, sheet metal. Well, I'm going to go to the tab that says sketch and then I'm going to choose create. And if you fly out this menu, you get an, an expanded menu here. And in this menu, I've got rectangle, center rectangle. And that's the one that I want to use because I want this part to be centered on the origin. So I'm going to choose center rectangle and then I'll take my mouse out here on the screen and I'll single click here and then I'm going to move my mouse and now you can see that I'm ready to start inputting dimensions. So if I go back and I look at that drawing, we can see that the dimension here for this uh, first dimension here is 30 and then I'm going to press the tab key on my keyboard and then that takes me down to that other dimension and that dimension there is going to be 55 and I can just press enter and that finishes up that sketch and it leaves me with a nice fully defined rectangle centered right on the origin and that is what we wanted from this model. So now from here, I don't need to exit the sketch or finish sketch or anything like that. I mean, you can do that, but you can also just jump right over here to the tab that says solid. So you can jump over here to this tab that says solid, and then you can choose this icon here for extrude. So I can jump to that tab that says solid. I can choose extrude. Fusion automatically takes me into that isometric view. It also automatically has the depth of that extrusion highlighted there. So I could just right away type in seven and you can see the preview updates and then I can press enter and boom, done. So really smooth, really fast workflow there in Fusion. You can just choose extrude and then type in the depth that you want. Now, if I press control Z, that's undo. I could also take that a little bit uh, further, get a little bit more elaborate. So I could choose extrude and then I could look over here at the uh, manager here for the extrude. And you can see that there's a bunch of options in here, like what direction is it going in? What's the distance? Does it have draft on it? All these cool options here. But again, I could just choose distance here, seven, enter and Boom, done with that extrusion. So now, now we're gonna go and we're gonna go back to this solids folder because now we need to round off these corners. So we're here on this on the, the solids tab and we're gonna go here to where it says modify because we're gonna be modifying the solid. And we're gonna modify the solid here with a fillet. So we choose the fillet command here and for our fillet, we're gonna be choosing this edge and this edge and this edge, and then we can uh, rotate the view around here. So to rotate, uh, what I usually do is I usually press straight down on the wheel and then I hold the, um, it's like the, the right mouse button while I'm holding the middle mouse button. I don't know if that's the right way to do it or if I'm doing that wrong. Hold on a second. Let me remember. What do I got to do to rotate that? Shift. I got to hold shift. There we go. Hold shift and rotate it. Shift in the, hold shift and press straight down on the wheel. There we go. Like I said, guys, I'm not, not entirely familiar with fusion yet. Uh, so this is kind of like a model along with me. So here we go. Fill it. And we're going to pick this edge here. You'll notice here that when you're trying to pick these edges, you don't want to, um, you don't want to pick the face by accident, but if you do pick the face, just click on it again and that'll unselect it. So a lot of times what will happen is you'll pick this face, this edge, this edge, you'll go to pick this edge and you accidentally pick this face. So just pick on that face again. And there you go. Now you just have the two edges and then that one there. And then as everyone knows, you hold shift and then press down on the wheel and that's how you can rotate the view. And then we're going to pick this one here as well. And there we go. And then for our radius, you can see the radius is already here, uh, kind of highlighted. You could also come up here, but one thing I, I really like about fusion is that as you're picking these edges, the radius value becomes highlighted. So you don't have to click anywhere. You just type eight, enter, and then boom, you're done with that feature. And so now for our final feature here, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to modify again. So we're on the solids toolbar. So we go up here to solids and then we go to modify once again. And once we go up to modify here, we're going to fly out this menu and we're going to choose, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to uh, fly out this menu here and we're going to choose shell. And then once we choose shell, we can pick on this face here. So we're going to remove this face and then everything else is going to get shelled. And once again, you can see fusion just like right away gives you the box where you're going to type in the dimension. So 1.6 and there the preview updates kind of dynamically and then enter and boom, we are done with that model. So that is how you can create the geometry for that model, but we're not quite done yet because you can see here in the challenge, it's asking us to come up with the mass for that model as well. So assign the material of ABS and then calculate the mass. Well, mass is material density times volume. So that mass, you know, that material has to be correct. 
So in Fusion, what we can do is we can expand this menu here that says bodies. And then once we expand that menu that says bodies, we can right click here on this uh, where it says body one. And then we can go to physical material physical material and when we choose physical material then what we can do is we can come over here to the properties for physical material we can see the library here and we can scroll down and we're going to see that we're just going to choose from the plastic library in fusion we're going to choose abs plastic and we're going to drag and drop that onto our body and there we go we can close and now we can go back over to where it says body one right click and then we can say properties. And when we say properties, we see here that Fusion is telling us that this model has a mass of 4.09 grams, 4.09 grams. So we're gonna say, okay. And we are gonna go over here to the challenge and we're gonna type in the mass here, 4.09. And we're gonna press enter. And oh yeah, we did it. It didn't say incorrect this time. It said, yes, that is correct. Congratulations. This answer is correct. So we did it. We got the correct mass there. Now for this very first challenge, the tolerance is very loose. So if you just use kind of the generic ABS infusion, it'll work. And you can see here 4.09. It's correct, but really it's correct within tolerance. But the thing is, eventually you're going to have to learn how to create a custom materials library. So if I right click here on this part and I go to physical material, you'll see here that I've got a custom two tall Toby materials library here. And in this custom two tall Toby materials library, you can see that I've got four materials, the four most common materials we use. Now I have created a video about how I created this library and where you can download it from so that you don't need to recreate this library. But I just want to kind of give you a heads up as you get deeper and deeper into the challenges on the website, you're going to find that you're going to need to be a little bit more accurate with your mass and that means you need to be more accurate with your density all right so i'm going to close that and like i said if you enjoy these challenges you can hit the create a free account here you can unlock some more free challenges but here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to uh the fusion app because now what i want to do is i want to take this shape and i want to turn it into a physical 3d print well in order to turn this into a 3d print what we need to do is get the geometry of that part onto what's called a slicer so what we're looking at here is kind of a preview of the bed for my 3d printer i'm using prusa today as my 3d printer and you'll your slicer is where you can set up all the settings like what's the infill percentage and what what's the geometry of the infill how thick are the walls what material are you using what printer are you using these are all things that you can set up in the slicer and so what'll happen is when you purchase your first 3d printer it'll probably come with some slicer software and you can use that software that comes with the printer like i'm using a prusa printer so i'm using a prusa slicer but they also make generic slicers that work with a lot of different printers and as as you get deeper and deeper into the world of 3d printing you'll probably want to learn how to use one of those because they've got more customization and you can really refine your settings but for your very first print what i would do is i would just use the default settings so i'm going to just pick quality here i'm going to pick generic pla that's my material or pet g or whatever your material is and then i'm going to make sure that i'm using the correct printer like i'm going to use a, a mini i'm going to use my uh, prusa mini today so now the question is, how do we get this geometry from Fusion into this slicer from Prusa? Well, the answer is we need to export this geometry to some neutral file format. And so the way that we can do that here in uh, Fusion is we can go up here to where it says file, and then we can choose export. Now, you'll also notice that Fusion does have the ability to prepare your model directly for 3D printing. And that's certainly an option as well. But kind of the, the tried and tested uh, way of doing this is you choose export and then you choose to export this to a file that can be 3d printed and you can see here that when you go to export from fusion even if you're using the free version of fusion you can export here to stl and stl is kind of the older version of 3d printing files 3mf is a newer version stl is like the antiquated older version but it still works it's like an old workhorse it'll just keep on working so i like to just export to stl for this demonstration and then i'll call this thing Thing, um, hollow hollow box fusion and then I'm gonna uh, drop this into a location so I'm gonna drop this into this location and I'll just put it here into the practice models tutorials from Toby and save and we're gonna say export 
And there we go. That file is exported from Fusion. And so now if we go back into our slicer here, we can take that STL and just drag and drop it in. And boom, there is that file. And so now we can take that file and we could turn it into an actual 3D print. Now, one thing that you want to know about your printer is that you're probably going to have options to rotate this part. And so here you can see that if I was to uh, rotate this thing to 90 degrees, it's not really ideal for 3D printing. And the reason I say that is because now we're going to have this kind of overhang here and that overhang is going to need to be supported and what i mean is this this interior wall here this wall here is going to need to have a bunch of support printed to hold it up and so a lot of times when you bring in your parts if they're oriented incorrectly your slicer will have a tool in it uh, like this tool here called place on face and what that lets you do is it lets you click on any face on the model and then that face gets placed face down on the bed so that makes it really easy to reorient orient your part to get the correct orientation and so in this case you can see that now I've got the part oriented kind of face up where I'm not going to need any support to print this model so that's a good little trick to know and it'll obviously be a little bit different if you're not using the Prusa slicer if you're using a different slicer but it's the same basic concept with all of these slicers so then the final step that you'll do is you'll you'll click something like slice or get ready for printer or send to printer. And then in the case of uh, uh, Prusa, what happens is it then immediately tells you what the estimated print time is, 26 minutes for these settings. And you can click export G-code and that lets you export a file that you would then put onto an SD card. And then you'll take that over to your 3D printer and let it rip. You know, in your 3D printer, you could say print from SD card and then you can just let it rip. So... That is the tutorial. The goal of this tutorial tutorial was to give you everything that you would need to go from having nothing to having Fusion. You know, I'm using the free version of Fusion here to creating this model using the app at tutaltobi.com to sending this model out to be 3D printed. So I hope that we covered everything you were hoping for in this tutorial. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this tutorial. Did we cover everything? Was there anything missing? Did we go too fast? Did we go too slow. I'm always interested in any feedback, but most of all, I really hope this helped you get onto your CAD journey and get onto your 3D printing journey. And if it did, be sure to like this video. Uh, be sure to visit us at tutaltoby.com for more challenges. Sign up for the Tutaltoby Discord. That's certainly a great place to get any questions answered if you get stumped on any of these practice models. And good luck. Good luck on your 3D CAD and 3D printing journey.